Hey there, Sifu Slim, and the email came in to me today about performance enhancing substances, PED or PES. And they've been around a long time. If you go back to Greek Olympics BC, you'll see that there were certain things they used to increase performance. So it goes way back. We can chemicalize things and use different plant matter, uh, herbs, these types of things to enhance our biochemistry, our physiology, our energy, all these things to increase performance. And if you're competing for life or death or for income, a lot of people have chosen to use these devices and their coaches have taught them about these devices, their parents, their siblings, older brothers, often teach younger brothers. Who gives you your first drink back in the 1950s or 40s or before, or your first cigarette? It's often the older brother who does that. It's not often your father at age eight, 12, et cetera, is gonna give you your first cigarette. It's this older brother or somebody in the neighborhood that does that or somebody else's older brother. So. These things go way back. And I sent an email out yesterday talking about world number one athletes, former world number one athletes since the 1970s who had associations with addiction and with either using performance enhancing substances or non-users, dopers versus non-dopers users versus non-users. And I came up with a list, and these are people I've followed for a long time. People I've followed for a really long time. Muhammad Ali, non-juicer during his professional career. He used um, liver pills and some other pills to lose water weight before his fight with Larry Holmes when he was really washed up and already had symptoms of Parkinson's. So that wasn't really performance enhancing substances. It actually messed him up. It made him dehydrated and he couldn't sweat before that fight. And he came in looking fit and suffered the consequences of not being fit and being really out of sync because he had no energy. He just said he felt tired even before the fight. If he hadn't taken that stuff and he was in shape, which he was, he might have gotten some shots in and he <clears throat> wouldn't have suffered the same damage, in my opinion, because he still had some abilities. He wouldn't have won the fight, but he wouldn't have just hung in the corner and got demolished for eight rounds, I think it was. Next on the list, Bjorn Borg, retired at, at age 26, top three player in the world when he retired. And in my opinion, he did not use performance enhancing substances. The list goes on from there. Let me see, I, um, Jimmy Connors, same thing, non-user performance enhancing substances, as far as I know. And if uh, word comes out and I learn differently, I will, of course, change my opinion. Those are just opinions based on long-term reading of articles, listening to their interviews, hearing other things from other tennis players talking about these things. Uh, who else on this list of famous people since the 70s I followed regularly. All of those aforementioned people wound up either during their career or after their career having a problem with addictive personalities. And uh, I'll share that in the uh, description below the email that I sent out regarding these things. Now, Mark Spitz, world record holder for a period of time seven golds in one Olympics in 1972 in Munich. Non-juicer, uh, as far as I can tell. Very intelligent person, very gifted athlete. So gifted, in fact, that he, um, he, bro he w broke world records in all of the seven events, won those seven events, and made a lot of money. He was the first Olympic multimillionaire, and that happened in the 72 to 70 five zone with his picture being used and some video being used, film actually probably at that time, maybe video, 
of, of him uh, you know, marketing products, those types of things. So there's Mark Spitz. He's the only person I can think of on the list that I just mentioned that didn't necessarily have an addictive personality. Uh, I don't know more about that. And Mark, I haven't read his book yet, but that's my first, maybe he was addicted to winning and working hard, but um, that's, not, uh, that's not as bad as being addicted to gambling, alcohol, drugs, sex, those types of things. Jack Nichols is on my list, non-juicer, very strong athlete, big body, did not need to gain muscle size, did not need to gain weight. He needed to lose weight when he was in his 19 to 26 year old state. He, they called him the Golden Bear. He was a really solidly built guy with extra adipose tissue on him. Did not, you know, out drove everybody or almost everybody in the top 10 easily. Just a very strong natural athlete. Jack Nicholas became addicted to, you know, success. He was addicted to golf, of course, but not, you know, not uh, abnormal for number one athlete in the world. You're addicted to your sport, your activity. And triathletes, my friend said, they're all ad addicts because it takes so many hours per day and you're addicted to it. There's a lot of pain involved. There's sickness involved with triathlon. You're overtraining all the time. It's not good for you. And that's how you live for a period of time. And they're all addicts, according to a friend of mine, not balanced people. But Jack Nicholas became a successful businessman, really put a lot of time into his businesses after uh, his, and during and after his golfing career. So those are some things I wanted to share with you today. And now I'm out at a park and what I wanted to share is that somebody responded back about Mark Aguirre, Mark McGuire, home run champ, um, broke Roger Maris's record, I think it was 68 homers in one season, and he did it on performance enhancing substances. Somebody sent me an email saying, oh, it was creatine and weightlifting. No, you don't become Andre the Giant in a year's time or year and a half or whatever it was gaining 40 to 70 pounds by doing creatine and weightlifting. No, you do not. It's performance enhancing substances. He got incredibly large, as did Barry Bonds, as did Canseco. Canseco is the one who looked like a bodybuilder. The other guys look like more like Andre the Giant. And, you know, Canseco came out and disclosed this. Mark McGuire denied it initially and then uh, later said he used very small amounts of things at times this and that and then he said I had to because I had injuries I had bad health and I wanted to be able to continue to play so those are those his stories I am not positive but I'm suggesting that he juiced to a high level like somebody like Lance Armstrong who had Dr. Ferrari from Italy and did all the everything they could get away with they did in the Lance Armstrong and and in the five to ten years before Lance Armstrong in the history of the Tour de France is a history of doping and using whatever they could ether to mask the pain cocaine methamphetamines alcohol caffeine um, anything that they could use nicotine whatever they could use. So now the question for Mark McGuire is, when are you gonna come out and tell the full truth? When are you gonna come out and say, this is actually what I did in this year and that year, and this is what I changed in this year. This was a risk I had, and this is how I felt in this year when I overdid this. When are you gonna do that? You're the, you know, the home run king of the history of the MLB. And unlike Babe Ruth and people in his era who were just sometimes partiers like Babe Ruth was, who had natural ability, was a big, strong athlete, had incredible hand-eye coordination, a great turn, could hit lefty and righty, switch hitter. He didn't have performance-enhancing substances. He, he died, I believe, in the 1940s. And they didn't have that in his era to the same degree they have it now. They had some things, but they didn't have what we have now. And he didn't, you know, he just gained weight by aging and drinking and eating and exercising less, but he was still good. He was a pitcher in his early days, just a natural athlete, probably could have played many sports, probably did. I have to read his bio again. I haven't read it in decades. So 
when Mark McGuire are you going to come out and do that? When are the other athletes going to come out and do that? Now, the question I have is income and fame and ego are the reasons that they do these performance enhancing substances. Okay, I don't have any problem with those three reasons of being parts of your motivation to excel in a sport. None whatsoever. I don't have a problem with that. But here where things change. Here's where things change. We're out of school, primary school. These kids leave daycare where they may be in there from a year to age four. And then they come here. This is a primary school. Okay. They even have a little climbing wall off in the distance. Pretty cool. And then uh, you're their father. Do you want them at age six or eight to hear that you are a suspected doper? and that your records are not legitimate? Is that what you want them to hear? And then when they start getting, you know, sticking up for you, do you want them to get in fights and maybe get their teeth knocked out or their head smacked or their knee broken or, <clears throat> you know, a black eye because they're sticking up for someone who hasn't been honest with the world? Do you want, is that what you want? Do you think that makes sense? Hey, there's the first question. Second question is, when they get to be 12 or 16 and they realize that they're just driven to be the best on the team that they're on, or they're lacking, they're not making the team, do you want them to go to a town or two over or cross the border into Canada or Mexico or wherever they can get some products or go to an inner city bodybuilding gym or wherever they can go online and start buying stuff to increase their performance. Illegal substances, or even if it is legal, but they're not well regulated and they're not well tested, these products. Do you want that person at age 12 or 15 or 18 or 22 to start using all of that stuff? And females as well. Simona Halep, former number one tennis player, just got a four or five year ban from the ATP Association of Tennis Professionals or the, the Women's Association of Tennis Professionals for her, they're not even suspecting her of doping, they are proving that she doped and she's denying it and is going to fight it and this type of thing, which is common. Almost always they fight it. I, from what I've seen in the articles, they almost always fight the charges. If your blood and urine are out of alignment with what is normal to a degree, that's three or five or 20 times what it different than what it should be normally. And they can trace that to traces or more than traces of performance enhancing substances that are illegal that are on their list. And they can, they can do that scientifically and have a retest of it and another retest, they're done. They don't need to, to do any more testing to listen to your, your story. And the only thing that, um, is a problem is if somebody purposely changes your urine sample or blood work with someone else's, and that's what you can look into in the um, documentary called Icarus about the Soviet or Russian doping program uh, over, over the past 50, 60, 80 years, and how when the American athletes went to Moscow, I believe it was, they did a lot of switching of samples to allow Russians to compete and to, um, I believe, show that other athletes from around the world, maybe Americans, maybe some other ones, I'll have to watch the documentary again, were doping, even though those samples didn't show they were, they switched samples to, you know, castigate and attempt to prove that the other countries should be disqualified. So this is the type of stuff that goes on in the very deception-filled world that we live in. So those are some of the questions I have for athletes like Mark McGuire, whom I do not wish any harm. I really wish honesty comes out and, you know, throw the shame away. You did what you did. Now you've got to live with it. You made millions. You've raised your kids. I'm 60. You got to be somewhere around my age. Maybe you're 62. So come out and be a man 
and be an honest man and be and and come out and do that honor Lou Gehrig great guy to honor honor Babe Ruth honor all those people who came before you the people you played with your coaches the team physicians who have had to lie for you or not disclose what they know about you and the athletes who came after them after you okay all of these people disclose this and let people know what's going on because they uh, they are buying your cards they had your number on their jersey that they wore for decades and you want your kids and your grandkids and your great grandkids to not be messing around with that stuff you know and i challenge you come on out and do a fitness program with me i'm not a world-class athlete like you were but i'm a world-class 60 year old maintenance fitness person and i'm a really good dancer <laughs> And I'm proud of it. It was a natural ability, and I have worked on it my whole life. And I'm silly, and I love movement. So I'm going to break down my own dancing here. Don't have anybody to hold the camera while I dance. So you won't be able to see that today. But there will be some more videos of me dancing. And there you have it. Mark McGuire wishing you all the best in your health, happiness, and wellness, and your honesty and integrity. And there's the challenge I have for you. And if I'm wrong... And if what you've said is all there is to the story, I want to hear about it. And I want to hear that you've sworn and you've, you can prove to me that you're being 100% honest because that's what it's all about. And you did deny these things for years. So then you came out and said, yeah, I did a little bit. And then he came out and said, I did a little bit more. Well, why don't you say what you did? Lance Armstrong's finally come out. It's taken him over 20 years, I think, to say all the things he actually did okay so now it's your turn to do the same thing former number ones coming clean helps the planet and helps all of us and helps all of your offspring and grandkids and keeps going big aloha from excellent provence france where i got to get back to my workout please like and subscribe wishing you all the best in your health happiness and wellness i'm sifu slim at sifu aloha <laughs>